Dear friends, welcome to the NIOS studio. In this video, we are going to talk about history and appreciation of art from 7th century CE to 12th century CE. Now we are discussing the history and appreciation of art. The post Gupta period in India is known for the progress in temple architecture and sculpture. Major dynasties like Pallavas, Cholas, Haisalas in the south and Palas, Senas in the east, Gangas in the central patronize this progress. In the south, in Mahabalipuram or Mamallapuram, we see the Pancharathas and the Mandapa structures. While Pallavas and their rivals, Western Chalukans, are remembered for their sculptural activities. Cholas and Hasalas would be always remembered for their temple projects. Chola artists excelled in the techniques of bronze casting and intricate metal sculptures with delicate and rhythmic body movements. But at the same time, Chola period has also given us some of the most important temples of southern India, like the Gangai Kunda Cholapuram temple, Brihadaswara temple and others. These temples are important for their simplicity, monumentality and majestic quality. Next in importance was Haisala art. Haisala style was a mix of intricate design and detailed study. The rule of the Hasala kings, many important temple projects were given shape. Speciality of the Hasala period temples are the presence of temple sculptures as part of the architecture. They form an important part of the architecture. In the eastern part of the country, some of the temples project were taken up by the Ganga rulers like Mukteshwara temple, Lingaraja temple and Rajarani temple in Orissa. Some of the most important Indian temples of Kanchipuram Chennai, Bhuvaneshwar, Bakura, Belur, and Halebid were built during this time. Artists of this time had become more and more 
proficient in carving and other techniques. Hence, this particular time is very important to understand the development of the Indian art and architecture. Let us know about the objectives of studying this lesson. After studying this lesson, the learner will be able to describe the brief the art of the period from 7th century CE to 12th century CE. He will identify the art objects of this period and distinguish between enlisted art objects of this period. The learner will be able to mention the main characteristics of the enlisted art objects of this period and identify distinctly the names of enlisted art objects of this period. We will discuss some of the famous artworks of this period. Origenus Penance Urjunar Spinans or Ganga Batarana. Let us have some general description of this work. The monuments of the Pallavas consist of cave temples and structural temples plus a few monolithic structures. Cave temples are those carved out of a cave, while structural temples are built with stone bricks one up over the other. There are some temples which are made of one piece of stone. So, it is called monolithic. One of the most important sculptural work of this period is from Mamallapuram. The relief is on two huge boulders. The sculpture is uneven, but very distinct and spontaneous in representation. There is a flow in the whole composition. There is a crowd of life size human and animal figures. They include gods, demigods and sages all in the flying position. There is a cleft in between 
two boulders. All the figures are shown facing the cleft. Though there are lots of movements and energy on the upper part of the relief, in the lower part of the composition, the life shown almost comes down. The ascetic figures in the crowd have been shown in meditating postures. The name of the relief, according to some scholars, is Ganga Bhattarana. Where Shiva has been shown receiving the flow of Ganges in his hair. To the right of the cleft, a four armed figure larger than all the rest can be identified as Shiva by the trident over his shoulders and his group of followers. Others think that it should be known as Arjuna's penance, A R J U N A apostrophe S P E N A N C E because a male figure which is identified as Arjuna has been shown at one end in the posture of meditation. This is a distinctly Pallava period work. There is enormous speed and monumentality in the sculptures. The animal figures and their characterization show the close observation of the artists. For example, the sleeping baby elephant, the monkey figures, the deer scratching its nose all show their acute study of the natural world. The figures have softness in the treatment and roundness. This has been regarded for ages as one of the masterpieces of the Indian sculptures from the southern part of the country. Now we will appreciate a work of art from Haisala period. This is Krishna supporting Mount 
گوبردھنا لیٹس ہیو اے جنرل ڈسکرپشن آف دس ریلیف ورک ٹیمپل آرکیٹیکچرس ویر ون آف دا امپورٹنٹ ایکٹیویٹیز ڈیورنگ ہیسالا پیریڈ بسائڈس دا ایلابوریٹ ٹیمپل آرکیٹیکچرس ایچ ٹیمپل آف دس پیریڈ واز ڈیکوریٹڈ with sculptures which formed an intrinsic part of the architecture. The Hoysala style is named after one of the famous dynasties of the Deccan. which emerged around the middle of the 11th century and is generally considered to have come to an end in the mid 14th century. The capital of the Hesala kings was Dwara Samudra. Which is now called Halibid. Hesala style is unique in its own way. and is highly characterized the earliest major Hasala temples are at Belur. Hasala sculptures show deep carving and undercutting, soft rhythms of the body contour, delicate and intricate designs, deep carving and undercutting is facilitated by the soft stone. It gives the rich surface texture and is responsible for the intricate and detailed scenes. This Krishna sculpture is one of the best examples of the delicate and intricate Hasala carvings. The whole incident has been shown in layers. The obvious placement of Krishna as the central figure with human beings and cattle in different layers present an interesting way of narration. Though Krishna has been shown in a heroic form, his stance of standing and the rhythmic limbs bring softness 
in the whole composition. Very interesting to notice is the liveliness of the animal figures with heavy breast and buttocks, elaborate jewelries, typical Indian hairstyle. This composition is an example of typical Haisala period style where the intricate carvings of the stone shows the mastery of the artist. Now, we are going to appreciate a beautiful statue from Konarak in Orissa. The Sun Temple at Konarak is one of the best of Orishan architecture. It was built by King Narasingha Deva the first of the Ganga dynasty in the eastern coast of India near Puri in Orissa. The period saw a different type of sculptural development. The temple is famous for its gigantic structure and larger than life size sculptures. The larger images usually of black stone have a little bit of affinity with later Bengal style of the Pal period. The modeling is tight and the face is broad with smile. The works are robust and have loose plasticity. The sculpture of the temple increases beauty and aesthetic value of the temple. The large sun image and the female musician figures present a different kind of quality in this temple. This little more than life size female musician is one from the group of similar kind of sculptures. These female musician groups are found on the terraces above the bottom and middle 
tires. They have been shown playing with full confidence and delight. They are boldly curved, the figures are full of movement and volume. Each one is shown with a different kind of musical instrument. The Surasundari is shown with a drum. In spite of the big face with smile, the rhythmic actions of the limbs and the slight tilt of the head present the graceful beauty of this drummer. The soft carving of the ornaments in between the breasts enhance the softness of this figure. The bends and the calves of the figures present a rhythm. The folds of the draperies and the posture add to the rhythm of the figure. What we have learnt from this lesson? After the golden period of the Gupta dynasty, the development in the field of art and architecture continued under different dynasties. In the post Gupta period, the centers of the art activities shifted to southern and eastern India. In the 7th century CE, Pallavas became powerful. Their capital was Mamallapuram or Mahabalipuram. The main centers which flourished during this period were Mamallapuram and Kanchipuram. Hence, a major portion of artworks of this period were found in these centers. Some of the important contributions of the Pallavas in the field of art are seen at Mahabalipuram. These are Pancharathas, Orjunas Pinans, Mandapas, the relief sculptures and 
many more. After the Pallavas, the important southern dynasties were Chalukyas, Cholas and Hesalas. Pallava, Chalukan and Chola sculptures show a gentleness which was not seen before. While the Cholas excelled in the technique of bronze sculptures, Hasala period is remembered for the stone sculptures with intricate works. They are known for their subtle poses, rhythms and movements in their works. Some of the best temple architectures were also built during the time, like Hayasalaswara temple at Halebid and Keshava temple of Somnathpur. After the Palas and Senas, the dynasty that became prominent was the Ganga dynasty in the east. This dynasty is remembered as an important builder and is credited with the construction of the gorgeous and majestic Sun Temple in Orissa. The temple which is in the form of a chariot drawn by horses is world famous for its architecture and sculpture. Though the architecture is damaged badly, what remains is enough for us to understand the greatness of the artists of this period. Learner, I hope you have understood a lot from the video. This video has explained about the history and appreciation of art from 7th century CE to 12th century CE. For any kind of learning support, you can contact us at our helpline number 18009393 for more information log on to w 
डब्ल्यू डॉट एन आई ओ एस डॉट ए सी डॉट इन थैंक यू फॉर लिसनिंग